Right, so when we look at adjustments, we can say that there are two broad categories of adjustments. And uh, just to give you an indication why we have adjustments again, throughout the year we're going to process transactions, we're going to record incomes, we're going to record expenses, we're going to buy some assets, we're going to sell some assets, we're going to incur some liabilities, and we're going to pay off some liabilities, etc. And at the end of the year, our financial statements is going to tell a story. And, or at least our accounting records is going to reflect a picture. And that picture that is reflected at the end of the financial year, we're going to call that the current picture. Now, the current picture is not necessarily the true picture of what actually happened during that financial year and at the year end, the value of assets, etc. at the year end. And therefore, we need adjustments. So the purpose of the adjustments is to get to what we're going to call our true picture. And in between the current picture is the adjustments. Yes, there are my adjustments. Good. Now the two broad categories of adjustments that we get is number one, the adjustment to reflect the true picture, I'm just going to say TP for the p true picture, of the incomes that we've earned and the expenses, expenses that we have incurred. Okay, that's the first broad category. And the second category is to paint the the adjustments necessary to paint the true picture of the value of my assets at the end of the financial year or the value of my or the business rather the business let's just say that the business group assets all right so when we look at our adjustments we'll group them broadly into these groups and it's the purpose of the adjustments is to paint the true picture. We'll go into a little bit more detail now. So when we look at this first group of adjustments, to paint the true picture of the incomes earned and the expenses incurred, there's two important principles that we need to be aware of. And that is the accrual principle, number one, and secondly, the matching principle. So let's quickly look at these two. Number one, the accrual principle. The accrual principle, what that basically says is that it's more important that we record the true picture of the incomes earned and the expenses incurred than it is to record what we what incomes we received and what expenses we have paid we as the business expenses paid All right so that's what the accrual principle says it says this year the incomes earned is more important and the expenses incurred is more important than the incomes received or the expenses paid. Or rather, not more important, but the aim of the principle is that we reflect the incomes earned in the financial period, not necessarily those received, and that we reflect the expenses incurred in the financial period and not necessarily those paid. So just to unpack this a little bit, what does it mean if we have incurred an expense well that basically means you have you have used the expense or you have consumed the expense or the service for that expense for example water and electricity if you have used water and electricity during the month you can say that the that the water and electricity has been incurred that expense has been incurred you will have a bill at the end of the month for that water and electricity that you have used. 
you may not have paid the water and electricity yet, but you have used it. So if you have used, incurred or consumed that expense during the financial year, it needs to be reflected during that financial year, even though you may not have paid it. On the, on the other side of this, you may have actually paid for expenses. You may have paid a whole 12 months of insurance policy premiums in advance, but you've actually not used or consumed that service yet. You will only consume that, use that service within the next financial year. Even though you've paid it, it's not yet used or consumed as such, and thus you have not incurred or accrued that expense during that financial year. When we look at the word incomes, the similar principle is true here. We're going to look at the income that we have earned and deserved and not necessarily the incomes that we have received. So just to rephrase that again, we're going to look at the incomes earned and not necessarily the incomes that we have received. Now, incomes earned ref refers to those incomes that we have earned. We've already done the work to earn those incomes, and we, we've already deserved them as such. For example, we may have already rendered accounting services to this person in the financial year, but this person simply has not yet paid us, so we have not received any money from them, but we've definitely earned, and the work has already been done, and we've earned those incomes. So that, in a nutshell, is the accrual principle. Now, tying in quite closely with this, is the matching principle. What the matching principle says is that we need to match the incomes and expenses to the financial period in which they in which they occurred. So if this is my financial year, all right, and I have, for example, paid, I've paid an expense from Let's say my financial year runs from January to December and right there in the middle, on the 1st of July, I've paid expenses for 12 months. There we go. Here's my expenses that I've paid. This is the, this is the current picture, right? We've actually paid this. However, matching principle says we can only... And we should only record expenses in the period to which they relate. So of all of this expenses that I've incurred, only half of it up to here, up to December, actually re relates to the financial year. Just to excuse my writing there. So only half of this, the six months, relates to the financial year. And it is thus only this six months year that we need to record and match to the financial year. Period. And this six months here is also the expense that we would have incurred. And the same is true for incomes. You may have received incomes for 12 months in ahead of time, but it doesn't actually relate to this part here, does not relate to this financial year. It relates to the next financial year. That is it in a nutshell. Um, just to give you one more example, another situation that might happen is you may actually only use or only pay uh, for, let's say, this much expenditure. But you may have used the expenses for the whole of the last six months. There we go. You may have used it for the whole of the last six months. So this is, you can see this is opposite to the first scenario that we had here. Let's just draw this the second scenario here we paid more than what relates to the financial year here we paid less than what relates to the financial year so both scenarios are possible and in this case we're going to have to make an upward adjustment for this portion here and here we had to make a downward adjustment for that portion there but we're going to look at some detailed examples good that, in short, is the accrual principle and the matching principle. And you remember, the main aim of this is to paint the true picture 
So true picture of the income earned and the expenses incurred. Currently, uh, at the end of the year, before we do the adjustment, what we will see is the incomes received and the expenses paid. And we need to do our adjustments to reflect the true picture right there. And that is in line with the accrual principle and the matching principle.